Well, hello, everybody. Hey, this is going to be a continuation of our last lecture on vibrational motion. And the last time, as a review, we talked about Hooke's Law. If we have an object, for example, um, a mass that is going to be vibrating up and down on a spring. Um, because this is a spring, we are going to be uh, dealing with Hooke's Law. And as we talked about before, Hooke's Law is equal to negative kx where k is the spring constant. Since f is equal to ma, a is equal to negative uh, k over mx. Now, again, we assume that omega squared is equal to k over m. Therefore, um, this omega is equal to the square root of k over m. Now, that is called, you guys, that is called the, <coughs> the angular frequency. The angular frequency is not the same as angular velocity, but... In a lot of ways, it we can think of it as the same thing. It was I will show you. Uh, I will show you in a minute. Okay, so we dealt with these equations right here for um, uh, the position, velocity, and accel acceleration questions for an object in simple harmonic motion. Now, this is actually going to give us a lot of information because the greatest value that we can have for a cosine, sine, or cosine here. Uh, is going to be one. So if we want the max, and this kind of makes sense here, our maximum x is going to be our amplitude. Our maximum x is going to be our amplitude. And then we can see here our maximum velocity is going to equal to omega a, omega a. Um, and um, now I know that says negative, right? But when you go through the cycle, you're going to get a positive a. Now, what I am not going to do with you I mean, technically speaking, okay, if you're saying up is positive, okay, uh, and it's going down uh, and through the, um, through the center of the equilibrium point, it would technically have its minimum velocity because it would be going at its fastest speed but going down. But we are, we are not, you guys, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to kind of think of it as the speed. Uh, so the maximum speed is going to occur in the equilibrium position. And um, it's either on the way down or the, on the way up. So I'm not, going to, I'm not going to try to fool you on any quiz by saying um, minimum, uh, minimum velocity being uh, negative omega a. And we'll call that minimum velocity zero which is going to occur at, uh, at the ends where it's turning around. Okay, uh, and then finally, we're going to get our maximum acceleration, which is gonna be omega, uh, omega squared A. So this is gonna give us uh, a lot of information. And again, just as kind of a bit of a review and a kind of an extension of what we know. So we know that period is equal to one over frequency. Remember that period is the time for one complete cycle. Frequency is the inverse of that. So frequency would be the number of cycles per second. And if that's the case, it's time. So it could be minutes or hours, but the standard unit would be um, cycles per second, which would be seconds to the negative one or hertz. Okay. Now, um, remember that um, we can say that omega, which is the, we can think of it now as the angular velocity. Uh, and if we want to know the speed of something, it's going to be omega divided by t, omega divided by t. Now, that's going to be constant here. So we're going to take the distance divided by time, but a specific distance, which is the angle, one complete revolution. And one complete revolution takes t, or the period. Uh, and therefore, from this information, uh, we can put in for period 2 pi over omega, uh, which would also be 2 pi times the square root of uh, m over k, okay? So notice here when we, do, uh, when we divide by omega, uh, it's the same thing as multiplying, multiplying by the inverse, okay? So now with that information, um, let's, let's go ahead and take a look and do a little bit of an experiment with this, um, with this particular, um, with this particular um, spring. Now, in order to, in order to establish, in order to establish the um, the spring constant k, all right, um, we need uh, Hooke's law, okay, 
and that's going to be the change in force divided by the change in x and that is going to equal to k now technically that's the uh, negative change in position because the force the restoring force is in the opposite direction of um, the change in position okay now we can we could do it without a spring or we could do it with this uh, with with we could do it without a mass and start there um, or we can um, already have a mass on here and that's what we're going to do here okay so we're going to take a reference here and the bottom the bottom of this spring here is at 77 centimeters okay uh, and what we are going to do is we're going to add we're going to add 500 grams 0.5 kilograms and when we multiply that by 9.8 we're going to get a change in force of 4.9 okay so we're going to put this on here and now we are going to uh, check the um, check the distance and that looks that looks to be about 93 about 93 all right so we're going to get our change in force was 4.9 newtons and um, we're going to get 0.93 minus 0.77 93 centimeters minus 0.77 centimeters all right and this is going to give us the spring constant k all right so we're going to say 4.9 divided by the quantity of 0.93 minus 0.77 and that's going to give us 30.6 okay so our k value for this spring is equal to 30.6 okay now um, it doesn't matter, you guys, it doesn't matter how much mass we have on the spring. That K value, 30.6, that's going to be newtons per meter, um, is going to be the same. But the frequency, the frequency is going to change. So, for example, if we have 500 grams, we can see that is going to vibrate uh, faster. And if we put on one kilogram it's going to be um, vibrating more slowly. Uh, and if we can, now we're going to have 1.5 kilograms. And now we can see it is vibrating up back and forth uh, even more slowly. Okay, so now um, as if we started up here, okay, and we let it go, and we time, and we time the, um, the number or the, the period of it or the time for one revolution, one cycle, um, we could we would get the period, obviously. Um, now, it's probably better when we're doing this experiment to, for example, do um, 10 cycles, okay? Now, I did this before and um, I found that the period was 13.3 seconds and that was 10, cycles or revolutions okay so if we divide by 10 okay our period our period is going to be uh, 1.3 seconds so we know what our k value is we know what our period is uh, and now we can figure out we can figure out a lot of things okay uh, like uh, our omega okay uh, and our um, and our frequency so you guys we already know that the frequency, which would be 1 over 0.33, which would be 0.75 hertz, right? Well, now let's take a look and see if we get that value if we use this equation, okay? So now we can see that frequency is equal to omega over 2 pi, omega over 2 pi, because uh, we just flipped that over. Uh, which would equal to the square root of k over m divided by 2 pi and the square root of 30.6 divided by um, 1.33 and we're going to take that and divide it by 2 pi and let's see what we get. Okay, 30.6 divided by 1.33. 
Um, and let's see, our 1.33, no, this is not 1.33. We want our mass and our mass is 1.5, okay? 1.5 kilograms. So 1.5 and we're going to take the square root of that and divide that by uh, 2 pi and we're going to get um, a frequency of 0.72. Okay, so our frequency is 0.72 hertz versus 0.75 hertz. And um, we can see that we were really not entirely um, um, precise or very precise there. And we still got something that's really reasonable. So we can see that we can go from um, experimental values and theoretical values. And we can see, we can see that um, how that uh, matches up. Okay. So now if we want to do sort of a quick example, if we say position is, let's say five cosine of three, um, five cosine of, uh, three T. Um, so what would our amplitude be? Well, our amplitude would just be five. Okay. And our omega would be equal to three. So there is, there is no uh, phase constant. There is no phase constant in this equation. And now we can figure out, hey, what would our um, position be at, um, at two seconds? What would our position be uh, at two seconds? And um, so we're going to, again, put in the cosine of three times two, which is six. So we're gonna say, say cosine of six, uh, that would be 0.96. And now we're gonna multiply that by five, which is our amplitude. And so our position at two seconds would be equal to 4.9 or 4.8, 4.8 meters. Now, if you guys put in the cosine, if you guys put in the cosine, uh, of three and you get an error message, then your calculator is not in radians. It is in uh, degrees. And so for these equations, we need um, those to be in um, radian mode. All right. So uh, the other thing we have here is we could say um, velocity, for example, what would our maximum velocity be? And we could kind of go back to our maximum velocity, which would be um, omega A. So omega A would be 15 meters per second. What would be our A max? Okay, well, our A max would be omega squared A, which would be three squared, nine times five would be 45 meters per second squared. All right. Now we could also, <clears throat> we could also um, plug in here our velocity, our velocity equation would be at negative 15 sine of 3t. Okay. And our acceleration would be negative 45 cosine of 3t. So now remember, as soon as we know, as soon as we knew, know omega and A, then we can um, figure out these whole equations and we can plug in any time we want and we can figure out wh where that position is at that particular time. Okay, so now we're going to, we're gonna shift gears here and um, I'm gonna try to show you something and I hope this will come out on um, uh, online here, but I need to erase a couple things and set something else up. So I'm going to come back in just a second. All right. So now, you guys, a few uh, a few minutes ago, we talked about omega um, being angular frequency, uh, and we also 
use the same letter as angular velocity, which is omega. And even though they're technically not the same thing, angular velocity for rotation and angular frequency for going up and down, it is um, technically not the same thing, but practically it is, okay? And an example of that would be if we've got um, a wheel going around, it's going to have an angular velocity, okay? And assuming that we have very little friction here, that this a point that I've indicated by putting a uh, stick to it is going to represent uh, a point on that line. It's going to have a constant angular uh, velocity. Now, what we're going to do here is now we're going to, um, with the over, with the um, the projector, with the projector um, shining, we're going to take a look at the shadow, and we're going to uh, line this up here. And at about this point, okay, we can see the shadow, okay, and it's kind of hard to see because the, um, the rod is kind of in the way, but just concentrate on the shadow. It's going between here and here, and we can see that um, the middle point right there is going to be uh, in the middle, and therefore the equilibrium point, okay? So now... We're going to go back and forth between positive A and negative A. And you guys, I want to illustrate how this um, is a sine or a cosine function. Um, because um, if we have, let's say, for example, a constant acceleration, right, then we would have an exponential sort of um, uh, velocity. Uh, it would just keep going faster and faster. Okay. But if we are, for example, near the top, right? So we could, what we could do is talk about maybe 30 or 45 degrees across here. Now, if we look, if we look at where the shadow is um, between uh, 35 and, you know, 35, 45 degrees, our change, our change in position is only like that much, okay? But now, if we're going to do that in a lower position like here 30 45 degrees right in there and now we look at now we look at the shadow and now we go 35 or 40 degrees and now we can see now we can see that change is plus or minus this right so it's it's quite it's quite a um, much more of a uh, much more of a change so if we now if we now take a look at our our, our sine and cosine curves here. And again, this black one, this black one was representing the position and the purple one is uh, measuring the velocity and the red one is measuring the acceleration, okay? So again, if we are near the top, okay, uh, and we can even uh, think about it over here, if we're between 35 and 40 degrees, right? Um, our change, our change is gonna be just plus or minus about that, right? But if we're in, for example, this section where it's going through the equilibrium, now we go 30, 45 degrees, and now we can see that we've got a much bigger change. So we can, um, we can clearly see that as those changes, as that projection, the projection, the shadow moving up and down, it appears to be moving slower in these upper reaches and faster in these lower reaches, which is in fact <coughs> true when we um, think about when we think about uh, this object going uh, up and down, okay, so its maximum velocity is going to be in the middle. Obviously, the minimum velocity is going to be at the top and bottom because it's got to be zero before it turns around. All right, so we are going to have uh, one. We're going to have one more uh, sort of lesson in this lecture. Uh, and that is going to be on the energy um, of um, an object, mechanical wave, mass on the end of a spring. So I'm going to set my diagrams up for that, and I'll be back in a second. All right, so now, you guys, we're going to look at the uh, mechanical energy, the mechanical energy of a wave. And we're also going to kind of reference this from 
uh, from a unit circle. This has a lot to do with that sort of um, that sort of shading here. Um, so I'm going to first talk about the unit circle and its relationship to, between sine and cosine. And then we're going to uh, quickly talk about kinetic energy and potential energy. But again, if we had a, um, a position on this angle, so this think of the, um, the wheel kind of going around, and this is where that stick is um, sitting up, and this is our reference point. So if it rotated that angle, okay, then um, what would the projection, so if we were to kind of come straight down, okay, this would represent positive A, this would represent negative A, right? So as it's going around, we're just seeing the shadow. And at this point right here, we would be seeing the shadow here. So what would this value, what would this value of X be? Now, we know that this is the radius, right? But the radius is equal to the amplitude, okay? So this X is gonna be equal to A, A cosine theta, okay? Now remember, what is theta? If we go back to our, um, our rotational, okay? Uh, then we can say theta is equal to um, omega t. Uh, as long as that is a constant or uh, an average uh, angular velocity. Again, technically, when we're talking about the shadow going back and forth, they're not the same, but they might as well be. Okay, so we can see that theta is equal to uh, omega t. And now, if we take a look at, uh, let me find a purple pen. Um, If we have, okay, um, right here is going to be the tangential, right there is gonna be the tangential velocity, okay? The tangential velocity. And we want to know, we wanna know the component. We wanna know the component, um, we'll, we'll call it V sub X, right? Now, if this is theta, okay, uh, then this is theta and this would be phi and then the, this would be theta. So if we wanted to calculate the velocity, then we would want that opposite side. And so uh, V sub X would be equal to um, V max um, sine, uh, sine theta. And that V max sine theta, now it's going to the left and we would get that negative. And what is our V max, okay? Well, our V max would be uh, equal to omega A sine theta. And again, remember we said theta is equal to omega T. We're ignoring our phase constant. So our velocity is gonna equal to uh, V uh, omega A sine theta. And again, it's going in the X direction. As we move around there, we could see that that would um, sort of change. Now, uh, lastly, uh, here, if we were to think about the acceleration, now the acceleration on a object moving around in a circle, remember, is going to be straight towards the center. That would be the centripetal acceleration. So essentially what we're looking for here is we're looking for this component right here. Now, if this is theta, then that is theta, okay? So we're making congruent triangles. So we're gonna go here and here. And we want this component, which would be the A sub X, okay? Uh, and this would be, um, uh, A would equal to A max. Uh, that would be the cosine function, cosine theta, which again would be omega T. And our, uh, our acceleration maximum would be omega squared A, omega squared A. And again, we can see that it's pointing in that direction so that uh, we're getting uh, negative. Again, all those things as we go all the way around, we could use uh, reference angles and they would change depending on what the angle was uh, to get us positive end or negative position, velocity and accelerations. So that's kind of that, that's kind of that unit circle uh, component. All right, so I'm gonna briefly talk, you guys, I'm gonna briefly talk about mechanical energy um, 
and um, potential energy for this string. And then we're going to pick it up in our next lecture. Okay. So in the absence, you guys, in the absence of any friction or air resistance, um, then we are going to have mechanical energy. So obviously, we're going to have one half mv squared. And that velocity is changing. That velocity is changing over time. Okay. And we're also going to have, we're also going to have potential energy. Okay. But again, I would like us to think about this object going back and forth. Um, sorry. Back and forth horizontally so that we do not have the combination of MGH and one half KX squared. If we're thinking about it just moving horizontally on a frictionless surface, then we can think of the potential energy as just being one half KX squared. One half KX squared. Now, this is going to be that total mechanical energy. Okay. Well, this uh, would equal to one half KA squared. All right. So um, if it is all, if it is at the extremes, if it is at the extremes, right, then the velocity would be equal to zero. At the, at the amplitudes, and therefore, these two things, which would be any position, we could calculate the velocity, but our total energy would be equal to one half k uh, a squared. At the same time, uh, that would be equal to one half v, v max squared, right? Now, remember, it's going to be have its highest velocity when it's going through the equilibrium. And when it's going through the equilibrium, our x is zero. So one half mv max squared would equal to the kinetic, kinetic energy and potential energy anywhere in between. But it would also have the same value as far as energy goes um, if it was at the um, extreme or the amplitudes. So you guys, we're going to explore this and we're going to be able to use this to find out a lot of information about, um, uh, about a mechanical wave that's different from the equations that we've had before. All right, until next time.